Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Daria, if you're new to my channel, and today's practice is called Dazzling Dancer's Pose. So we're, we will work progressively toward a couple of different variations of dancer's pose in this practice. It's a deep backbending shape as well as a heart opener and one of my favorite poses to practice. So for this class, if you have a yoga strap, go ahead and grab one of those. I actually don't have one at home. What I'm using is a TheraBand instead. So something like this, or a good thing that you might have just around the house is like a bathrobe waistband that can work. Whatever you have, grab it. And when you're ready, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll get started today just from a comfortable seat. So find your way here to Sukhasana. Let the sitting bones anchor you down toward gravity. The knees fall open wide and then rest your palms onto your thighs, facing up or facing down, whatever is comfortable. Softly close your eyes and begin to send your awareness more internally, moving away from any external stimuli that you've encountered so far in your day and taking some time now to check in with yourself. And begin to deepen your breath. And as the breath deepens, allow your awareness to move more deeply through your physical body. And with every inhale, feel the breath filling up all four sides of your torso the front body, the back body, and both sides of your waist, inflating the space between your ribs and then eventually working all the way up to the surface of your collarbones. When you breathe out, allow your pelvis to get heavier, allow your hips to melt into the earth beneath you. And just take a few more moments breathing here you can start to cultivate your ujjayi pranayama, breathing in and out through your nose and finding that soothing quality to the sound of your breath. It's like ocean waves ebbing and flowing. And now set an intention for your practice today with Practices working toward a peak posture, often the implication is sort of that we're expecting some kind of outcome, that we're expecting to reach some version or variation of a pose. So see if instead you can drop that mindset and see it more as a playful exploration. Just a chance to wonder about what your body can do, how it can move, and to really turn your brain off and let your body guide you for a few moments. Let's take one more breath here, seated in through the nose. Let a sigh out of your mouth, releasing any tension. And blink your eyes open. Bring your palms together and just rub them vigorously in front of your chest, creating some heat. And rub a little faster. And then once you feel nice and warm here, just hover your hands away from each other a couple of inches and feel the energy moving between them. Let's just do that one more time. Start to rub the hands together again. And a little faster. And a little faster like you're gonna make a fire between your palms. And then separate your hands and just feel the heat, feel that buzzing energy that you've created. And start to make your way up onto your hands and your knees, coming into a tabletop. Root the four corners of your palms so you feel the heels of your hands, the thumb mounds, the index finger mounds, and then the pinky mounds. Then stretch your fingers as wide as possible, like your hands are stars bursting open, and then tack down your finger pads. And from here, start to pull your palms isometrically toward one another. So without actually moving, there's a little hugging of the midline. Do the same with your knees. Notice how you feel your core beginning to activate as you hug in. 
And we'll start with some thoracic spine circles. So as you breathe in, just allow the back of your heart to melt down toward the earth. So your ribs will fan open a little bit into gravity. Then begin to glide your ribs toward the left side of the mat, expanding there and contracting right side body. Now press down and puff up the back of your heart, getting really hollow in the core, closing your ribs. And then finally, allow the ribs to fan open toward the right, closing in the left side body. Go one more time in this direction. And now try to feel it less analytically and more intuitively. Circling through just the ribs and isolating that space. Now travel two times in the opposite direction. So ribs pull toward the right first and then lift up toward the sky, over to the left and melt the back of your heart down into gravity. One more time. Make sure you're breathing. Neutralize your spine. Pick up your right hand and bring it to the back of your head, elbow wide. As you inhale, turn your heart and your chest toward the right side of the mat. And then as you exhale, drive your right elbow down, <clears throat> excuse me, toward your left wrist. Take a breath in, turn your heart open one more time. And exhale, elbow comes down toward your wrists. One more time, just like this. Inhale, open up. Think of revolving from your rib cage. And then as you exhale, elbow comes down toward your palm. Plant your right palm down, breathe in, left hand behind your head, turn your heart open. And now as you exhale, twist, left elbow toward right wrist. Two more times, inhale, we're just waking up the spine and exhale. Last one, breathe in, turn from low ribs to middle ribs to the upper ribs, then the gaze moves toward the left elbow and exhale to twist. Find your way back to hands and knees. From here, come up onto your fingertips and begin to walk forward into Anahatasana, heart melting pose. So the hips stay floating over the knees. Bring either your forehead down to the mat or the chest and the chin. Plant your palms flat now, dig into your fingertips and create that same action of hugging the midline so your palms are pulling together. Just melt here for two more breaths, in and out through the nose. Soften the creases of your hips, relax your forehead. On your next breath in, press down into your palms, lift your elbows away from the earth, get hollow through your core, and try to press your upper back up toward the sky without moving your hands at all. And then as you exhale, come back down into Anahatasana. So your heart is sinking, the tailbone is rising, the sitting bones are spread. Inhale, press down, round your spine. It's like a cat's shape. So the back of your heart is, is really rising up toward the sky. Tuck your chin a little toward your chest. And then as you breathe out, once again, hips high, heart melts. One more like this, inhale, press down like a cat pose, but still in puppy, and exhale, melts back into it. Press into your palms and begin to walk your hands back beneath your shoulders. Curl your toes under, take a breath in. As you breathe out, press down, glide back, downward facing dog, hips go high to the sky. And take a moment just to settle. Allow the foundation of hands and feet, fingers and toes to really root you into gravity. And then begin to spread your breath through your spine, elongating up and back through the very tip of your tailbone. Continue hugging into the midline, palms pull toward one another and your two feet are pulling toward one another. And now see if you can close your ribs and press straight down from the back of your heart into the earth through the hands. Now, once you feel like you're pressing as much as you can, see if you can press just a little bit more. Really, really press. Palms down and forward. Your feet are pressing down and backward. 
And then breathe through the fire that's building, broadening your upper back, softening the back of your neck, but activating into the arms. On your next inhale, turn your gaze forward to the top of your mat. And as you breathe out, just step your feet forward into a little ragdoll fold, hanging here for a few breaths. Bend your knees, drop the head, relax. Any movements that you'd like to take, feel free. And any arm variation that feels good is available. Root your fingertips down to the earth. On your next breath in, begin by lifting your toes. Pull up through your thighs and the lines of your legs. Reach your tailbone back and stretch the crown of your head forward, coming into a halfway lift. As you exhale, bow down into a fold. Again, inhale, inflate your toes, pull up the fronts of your thighs, stick your butt back, reach your heart forward, crown of head forward, halfway lift. It's like your whole body is bright. And then exhale to bow down. One more time, inhale, light everything up. Exhale, fold. Bring your hands to interlace at the base of your spine now and see if you can bring the heels of your hands together. Keep a micro bend in your elbows. Begin to brighten your toes, pull up your thighs, squeeze your shoulder blades together, stretch back through the knuckles and forward through the crown of your head. Feel all the expansion through your chest, collarbones are wide. Take one more breath here. As you exhale, press through your feet and rise all the way up to stand, keeping your back flat and keeping your fingers interlaced behind you. Now, take a breath in, tuck your tailbone underneath of you, press your hip bones forward and come into a little back bend, still with the hands interlaced, just lifting the back of your heart up toward the sky. Doesn't need to be super deep, keep it feeling nice and sweet. Inhale here. Exhale, press down, rise up to stand, neutralize your spine. Release the grip of your hands and spin your palms to face forward to the top of your mats. Take a breath in, circle the arms wide and up to the sky. As you breathe out, draw your palms together in prayer at heart center. Close your eyes and just take a moment here. Feel your feet landing. Imagine that you're growing deep roots down through the soles of both feet. And so you can stretch all the way to the center of the earth. And then feel the energizing, rebounding effect of the pressing down. So it's creating a lift all the way up through the crown of your head. Eyes blink open, palms can stay in prayer. On your next breath in, press into your right foot and float your left foot to hover, then draw your knee up toward your chest into one-legged Tadasana. Steady your hips, find the focus of your gaze. Continue actively pressing into all four corners of your right foot. Take a breath in here. As you breathe out, glide your left foot away from the mat just to a hover and then stretch your toes back as far behind you as they'll go. Bend deeply into your right knee. Keep your palms in prayer, keep your focus steady as you softly land your left toes to the back of your space and sink your knee sweetly behind you. Inhale, rise into Anjaneyasana, kneeling warrior. Now here, rather than sinking all of your weight forward into the hips, back off a little bit. Imagine that your two hip bones, hip points, are drawing toward one another, like you have a drawstring and you're tightening it. Notice how this helps to engage your deep core, those low abdominals. Then, keeping all of this and hugging your feet together, allow your hips to melt down and forward just a bit. Take one more breath in, and the breath out, sink. Inhale, lengthen past your fingertips. Exhale, circle your fingertips forward to the top of the mat. Lift your back knee, and then launch into a standing L. Left toes glide back. All five toenails are pointing down. Your hips are squaring. Breathe in here, stretching out long. Now, as you breathe out, softly, gently, place your left foot back down to the mat at the top, so parallel to the right one. 
inhale halfway lift lengthen out of the spine and exhale just fold down press through your feet inhale reverse swan dive rise all the way up to stand fingertips high exhale draw your palms to meet at heart center press down into your left foot float your right foot to hover and then draw your knee up toward your chest one legged tadasana flex your toes actively back toward your shin Hug your belly button to your spine. Press from the core of your pelvis down into the left foot. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Hover your right foot just an inch or so away from the mat and then begin to reach your toes to the back of your space. Keep gazing forward just at one point. Bend the left knee deeply and as softly as possible with as much control as possible. Land the right toes to the back of your mat and then let your knee find the earth. Inhale, reach your arms up toward the sky, kneeling warrior. As you exhale, imagine that your hip bones are magnetized toward one another, activate into your core, and then begin to sink down into some depth in your hips. One more breath here. Big inhale. And now as you exhale, fingertips circle down and around to the top of your mat, forward of the left toes, pick up your back knee launch forward right leg to the sky breathe in stretch back through right toes forward through crown of head and then as you breathe out just step down and fold at the top of your mat inhale halfway lift lengthen out exhale place your palms step back to a plank pause in plank let's heat up the front body so once again press down into your palms as much as you think that you can and then go a little more press a little harder so you're really rounding into the upper back doming between the shoulders and hugging your full front body to your back body the thighs are active quads are lit up take one more breath here inhale stay as you exhale press 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 inhale lean forward shoulders over wrists Exhale, chaturanga, lower, halfway down. Then sink your pelvis, your chest, and your chin to the earth. Untuck your toes. Bring your fingertips to interlace at the base of your spine. Heels of the hands are hugging. Now, start by pressing into your toenails. Notice as you do this that this activates your thighs. Then press your hips down. It's like your pubic bone is kind of stamping into the earth. From here, pull in through the lines of your waist. Take a breath in, hug the shoulder blades, reach your knuckles back and stretch your sternum forward. And just stay and feel. Activate biceps, activate triceps. Now you can stay here or you can begin to float the tops of your feet and the tops of your thighs away from the earth. Hug the midline by pulling your inner thighs toward one another. Spread through your toes and then stretch longer and curl your heart up. Breathe in. Breathe out, release everything down to the earth. Undo the grip of your fingers and take the fingertips out to the wide edges of your mat aligned with your heart. Create little tents with your palms so that they are lifted. Keep your feet about hips distance apart. Now, as you inhale, press through your, your legs. Imagine your legs here are like a mermaid's tail, so it's kind of heavy into the earth. Then, keeping the chin tucked toward the chest, leading with the sternum, begin to rise up into a cobra. At the top, draw your shoulder blades together behind you and imagine that you could drag back on your fingertips. So really feel the, the middle back is the space that's stretching forward. One more breath in. As you breathe out, release down belly, chest, and chin. Rolling cobra, let's take three more. Use the inhale to lead with your chest and then allow your chin to rise as a natural reaction of lifting into the cobra. Drag back on your fingertips, biceps wrap forward. Exhale to lower down. Inhale to lift, ride your own breath, going at your own pace here. Exhale to lower. Breathe in, rise. Activate your glutes by imagining that the sit bones are reaching towards your heels. And exhale, release down. 
Place your palms beside your ribs. Tuck your toes. Come through hands and knees, and then stretch your hips back towards your heels, arching your back as you go. Resist by pulling your heart forward, and imagine that your palms are on a moving walkway or like a treadmill that's being dragged back, but you're resisting, so claw down. Just stay here, breathe. Notice the fire in your back body. Dig down more into your palms until your arms start to shake. Next, inhale, round your spine. Come forward through hands and knees like a cat pose. And as you exhale, hips glide up and back into downward facing dog. Take a few steadying breaths here, breathing in and out through your nose. You can bend your knees a little. Just explore any movements that want to come to life in your body. On your next breath in, look forward, lift your heels, bend your knees, breathe out and step or hop to the top of your mat, forward fold. Breathe in, halfway lift, lengthen out. Breathe out and just fold down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, press through your feet, rise all the way up to stand, palms to the sky. As you exhale, dry your palms to meet at heart center. Take an inhale, press into your right foot and float your left knee into one-legged Tadasana, active flex through the toes. Breathe out, press down. Next, inhale, point your left toes forward, firm both thighs and stretch your arms up high to the sky. Big breath in here. Now, as you breathe out, float your left foot down beside the right one to hover, skimming the mat. Cactus your elbows, so really squeeze the back of your heart. And then stretch back through your left toes, forward through your heart, and reach your fingertips to the back of your space. Allow your torso to bow forward into airplane pose. Squeeze your belly button to your spine. See how much you can blast open in every direction. Take a breath in. Now, as you breathe out, bend your right knee deeply. Reach your arms forward to counter the balance of your left toes stepping back. Align as you transition for warrior one. Left toes turn out to 45-ish degrees. Softly land your foot, root your heel. Inhale, arms rise overhead. As you exhale, draw in through your ribs and circle your fingertips around and back to interlace at the base of your spine. Take a breath in, puff your heart forward. And now as you breathe out, bow down into humble warrior. Check that your front knee stays tracking over the toes rather than rolling inward. Soften between the shoulder blades, or rather keep squeezing there, but let the breath soften away any knots or any tension in the shoulders and the back of the neck. Breathe sweetly to the heart space. Next breath in, lengthen out into a halfway lift. Lift your back heel, and as you breathe out, press forward, come back into airplane, but this time with the fingers interlaced, so left leg glides back. Breathe in to elongate. As you breathe out, kick your left heel in towards your sit bone. See if you can hook your foot through your palms. So the, the palms come to the top of the left foot. And then as you inhale, press into your right foot, stretch back through your left shin, almost like a floor bow, and curl your heart forward. Breathe in here, let it stay sweet. Hug your inner thighs toward one another and lift your pelvic floor, one more breath. As you breathe out, just softly let your left foot find the earth and spin your palms to face forward. Take a breath in, fingertips rise to the sky. As you breathe out, palms to prayer, heart center, press into your left foot and float your right knee in towards your chest, flexing your toes. Breathe in, find length in your spine. Breathe out, press down into your left foot, really grip them out with your toes. Next inhalation, right toes reach forward, all 10 fingertips rise to the sky, biceps beside your ears. As you breathe out, float your right foot to hover an inch away from the mat. Cactus your elbows. Really stretch from your sternum forward as your toes reach back. Fingertips find the back of your space. Imagine the air is solid 
and you can press down into it. Notice how this helps you to traction the spine more forward. Spin your back thigh to point down. Breathe in, lengthen. Breathe out, reach forward with your arms, back with your right toes, bend your left knee deeply, and take a slow, deliberate step into warrior one in the legs. As your heel finds rooting, breathe in and rise through your torso into warrior one. As you breathe out, fingertips come to the base of your spine, interlace them there. Breathe in, puff the heart. Breathe out and just bow down, left shoulder inside of the knee. Allow your head to soften. Continue to squeeze your outer left hip in toward the midline. Breathe in, halfway lift, lengthen out of the spine. As you breathe out, pick up your back heel, press straight down into the left foot to float your right leg back behind you once again into airplane, but with the arms interlaced or the fingers interlaced. Breathe in, find more length. As you breathe out, kick your right heel in. See if you can thread your foot through your hands, finding that connection between both hands and feet. Then begin to stretch back through the right shin as you pull forward with your heart. If you're wobbly or calibrating, that's totally normal. And it's a part of this practice of finding our balance. So feel the calibrations and notice how you can adjust in each moment. Breathe in. Breathe out and step your right foot down beside the left. Palms spin to face forward. Take an inhale, stretch up to the sky. As you exhale, big dive down, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, stretch it out. Exhale, place your palms and step to a plank. Inhale to lean your shoulders forward of your wrists. Exhale, chaturanga, lower halfway. Untuck your toes, breathe in, and press into an upward facing dog. As you breathe out, shoot your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe in. As you breathe out, press the earth away from you. Lift your heels and come down to your knees. Grab for your strap or whatever kind of prop that you have available. <clears throat> we'll do some opening into the shoulders and then we'll move into a couple of different variations of dancer's pose. So starting with your hands a little wider than your shoulders. We're just gonna pull this strap all the way up and around to the back and then up and around to the front. So you want there to be some resistance so that it's not just really easy for the arms to go around and back. Depending on what kind of prop you're working with, the distance of your hands will vary. If you need more resistance, walk your hands closer together. If you need more space and less resistance, the hands will be wider. So my band has quite a lot of give to it, which is why my palms will be closer to each other. So continuing with these pass-throughs just up and over a couple of times. Keep breathing. Try to keep your ribs closing and pulling down so we're not flaring through the ribs and we're not arching the low back, but the core is staying nice and connected. And just take two or three more. Good. Next, we'll take a cow face shape in the arms. You might use your strap for this, you may not need it. We'll start with the right elbow facing up toward the sky and then drop your palm down to the space between your shoulder blades. The left palm is gonna spin back and circle around and see if you can bring your fingertips to touch or to uh, hook and connect. From here, try to lift through your heart and soften your shoulders away from your ears. Just breathe into everything that you're feeling. Try not to force anything. If you're using the strap, the strap can assist in helping you to walk your hands a little closer to one another. So if that's where you are, just keep working the palms more toward the center of your shoulder blades. Let's take one more breath on this side. And then release. 
Other side, switch so that the left elbow flips up toward the sky, palm is to the center of your shoulder blades, and then the right hand crawls up and back behind you. And you might notice, you probably will notice that one side is significantly easier than the other, that's okay. Try to just drop any of those labeling words like better, worse, good, bad, even easier and harder, and just let it be different. Deep breaths. And release. Place your palms down, find your way up onto your feet in a forward fold. Breathe in, halfway lift, lengthen out. Breathe out, just to bow down. Press through your feet, reverse swan dive, rise up to stand, palms high. As you exhale, draw your left arm down beside you, elbow in towards your waist, palm flipping up like you're serving a tray. Kick your left heel in towards your sit bone and then reach to grab your foot from the inside, so the big toe side. From here, really hug your inner thighs together, tuck your tailbone under a little bit and lift through your pelvic floor. Now, begin to flex your toes into your hand and start to kick back, leading with the shin. And kick back any amount, and then allow your torso to start to move forward only as a natural reaction to how much you're kicking. You're creating this wine glass shape in the body. Continue to find engagement between your inner thighs. Activate the left glute. See if you can reach just a little higher through the toes. One more breath in. As you breathe out, press down. See how much control you can use as you release the left foot back down to the mat and draw your palms to meet in prayer. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, right hand comes down beside you, palm flipping up toward the sky. Kick your heel in towards your sit bone and then find the connection between hand and foot, grabbing from the inside. Continue really actively flexing your toes into your hand. Hug your inner thighs. Stretch your sit bones down toward gravity and then lift from your pubic bone up to your heart space as you begin to kick back. Just try to feel intuitively for your edge. Remember, this is called Dazzling Dancer's Pose, so we want it to feel kind of like sparkly and open in the heart space rather than crunchy or tight or strained in the low back. Keep finding that tug of war between your hand and your foot. Let's take one more breath. Beautiful, exhale, release. Come out of it and softly place the right foot down. Palms come to prayer, heart center. Close your eyes. Take a couple breaths. If you need a sigh, clearing exhale, do that. Maybe roll out your head and your neck. Whatever feels good. Next round, we will play with flipping the grip. So grab for your strap or your band, whatever you have. <clears throat> we'll create a little loop to hook your foot through. So you can start just by finding that. So the heel is kicking in towards your sit bone again. Now from here, grab onto your strap with your palm facing up toward the sky. Right arm goes overhead. Begin to just kick back through your shin a little bit. Keep hugging your heel in towards your sit bone though. So there's activation in your hamstring. You'll begin to spin your elbow wide to the side and then all the way up toward the sky. As you do this, important to keep squeezing the shoulder blade into its socket, so shoulder down and away from your ear. Now you can begin to kick back and maybe find the strap with your opposite hand. From here, reach your heart forward and you can walk your hands up on the strap as, as far as feels comfortable and maybe you find a connection with your foot. And let's just take one more breath here, big inhale. Exhale, kick a little more into your depth. Press through your feet, rise back up to stand. Slowly, gently release, and you can step the left foot down beside the right one. 
Switching to the other side, find the little loop in your strap and then hook your foot through. Swing it around and back behind you so your heel is coming toward your sit bone. Right palm is facing up toward the sky, grabbing onto the strap. Left arm rises high, plug down into your left big toe mound and your pinky toe side evenly. Then begin to kick your heel in, kind of like you're kind of reaching your toes towards your shoulder. Plug the shoulder into your body and then wrap your right elbow out to the side and then up overhead. Maybe you just stay right here. Maybe left hand finds the strap as well. And then you can start to walk your hands in more toward your foot as you kick back and arc your heart open. Continue to find the expansion in your chest and that glowy feeling in this dancer's pose. One more breath in. Stay as you breathe out. Press down and rise back up to stand. Release your strap gently as possible. And just find your way to standing at the top of your mat again. Palms together to touch. Ah, soften into your feet. Take a couple breaths. Blink your eyes open. And we'll go one more round. Up to you. You can go back to that first option that we took. Or you can use the strap once again, or maybe play with flipping the grip without using the strap. So if you're taking that third option, inhale, reach your arms up high to the sky. As you exhale, left elbow comes in towards your waist, palm is facing up toward the sky, kick your heel in towards your sit bone. You're gonna grab from the outer edge of your foot now, the pinky side, kick your heel in tight towards your body. Plug your shoulder blade into your body, then begin to wrap your elbow out to the side and then all the way up overhead. Now start to kick back. Maybe find a connection with your foot through the opposite hand and then stretch open through the heart. Try to focus less on the depth and more on creating that sweet sensation, expanding, opening the chest wherever you are. One more breath in. Breathe out and release. Step your left foot down. Inhale. Exhale right away to the other side. Right uh, elbow in towards your waist, palms facing up to the sky. If you're flipping the grip, kick the heel in toward the sit bone. Grab for the outside, outer edge of your foot. Flex your toes into your hand. Then begin to hug your heel in as you wrap your elbow wide to the side and then all the way up overhead. And maybe you find a connection with the opposite hand and then begin to kick back as you stretch through your hearts. One more inhale. Exhale, let it go. Step your right foot down beside the left. Separate your feet hips distance apart, breathe in, reach up. As you breathe out, swan dive down, forward fold. Come now back into a ragdoll. So just drape everything down, heavy over the thighs. Bend your knees a lot. Reach for opposite elbows. Letting everything hang heavy into gravity. Sway side to side. Let your breath massage through any kinks or knots along the spine. Shake your head no. And nod your head yes. Bring your fingers down to the mat. Walk your feet together. Lift high onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees deeply and then sink your hips down towards your heels into a ball pose. Curl in tight through your core. Tuck your chin toward your chest. Good. Bring your heels down, reach forward through your fingers and see if you can come to a seat without using your hands. Walk your feet forward. We'll find a seated 
staff pose. So flex your toes, pull your heels a little back towards your sit bones, just lengthen through your spine. It's like the seated Tadasana, Dandasana. Breathe and see how much you can grow. Let your, your sit bones and your tailbone be like roots. And then from those roots, like you're a plant, grow high, high, high through the crown of your head. Take one more breath. From here, keep the length. Begin to walk forward into Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. You can reach to grab the shins, the ankles, the feet. Every time you breathe in, try to find elongation through your spine. As you breathe out, you can bend your elbows and reach your chest forward toward your big toes. Two more breaths here. Equalizing inhales and exhales. Press down, make your way up and out, and then walk your feet to the top of the mat, bending your knees. Bring your sit bones a little more forward, and as you inhale, stretch up through your fingertips. As you exhale, lower down onto your back, rounding the spine as you go down and using your core for five, for four, three, two, and one, release. Back of the headlands, palms can come down beside you. Walk your feet in a little closer towards your sit bones, and then press down, bridge your hips up toward the sky. Create space from hip bones to knee points. Wiggle your shoulders together underneath of you, and we'll take a supported bridge using our hands. So bring the heels of your hands to your sacrum with your fingertips pointing out, and then allow for the weight of your pelvis to get heavy into your hands. So you're giving your, your hips to gravity. Close your eyes, breathe into your heart. And with every breath out, try to relax even more, dropping the weight of your hips. One more time, breathe in. As you breathe out, you can release your hands down and roll down your spine, one vertebra at a time, finding the earth again. And now hug your knees into your chest, wrap yourself into a tight ball. Squeeze your nose to your knees, take an inhalation. And an exhalation, come open into Shavasana. Let everything drop. Feel the heat, all the warmth that you've created with your practice today. And then just bask in all of these after effects, all of the sensations that come from moving the body, from heating up, and from finding expansion. Stay here even longer and keep melting if you'd like. 
When you're ready to come out, begin to bring soft little movements back into your fingers and your toes. Take a few deep breaths and then stretch yourself long. Reach one side of your body longer, so like left toes forward, left arm back, contract a little the right side body, and then switch to the other side. Let's go back and forth a couple times as it feels good for you. And then take one more big long inhale. On an exhale, let yourself melt into fetal pose, relaxing down for one last moment here. And then start to press down and make your way up to a seat. Finding our way back to Sukhasana, just where we began. Feeling the gravity into your pelvis and the lightness through your spine. And once you've found your seat, dry your palms to meet together at heart center. And again, we'll take that rubbing action of the hands together, creating heat, creating warmth. Go just a little bit faster and a little faster, building that fire. And now this time, hover your hands over your heart space. And receive that energy. Let your palms meet at heart center one more time. Take a moment to feel the effects of your practice on your body, on your mind, and on your spirit. Lift your heart towards your thumbs and bow your chin to your chest. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your movement practice with me today. I hope that that felt good for you wherever you are on your dancer's pose journey. And I hope you're doing really well wherever you are. If you're not subscribed to my channel, you can go down below and do that. You can also join as a monthly donation member. Both of these really help to support my channel so that I can continue to create free content. Have a great rest of your day or your nights and I'll see you soon in the next class. Bye.